Hey, it's me, Mike Rowe. I'm here with Larry, and he just said, I can introduce myself any way I wanted, so hi. I'm Mike Rowe, the CEO of the MicroWorks Foundation, and the erstwhile host of a little program you might remember called... Dirty Jobs, with now, Mike Rowe, I think it was. Correct. Yes, which was sort of made it obvious well, you know what? why you were there. When in doubt, put your name in the title. <laughs> It never hurts. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to start your own job that way, though, because they won't let me put my name in. Under the, baby uh, steps. On it. Yeah, baby, baby steps. steps. Baby steps. Right? Yeah. Well, eventually you're going to get to the point where you actually introduce your guests instead of making them do it. And when and when you get to that point, oh, okay, that's when things are going to take off. For that's you, one right? of those rules. That's one of those rules that I violated. There, eh, there are no rules. Oh, okay. There are no rules. Suggestions. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for becoming the face and the voice of uh, working people uh, in this in this world. I, I come from a, a working uh, class background. My brother's a machinist. Uh, you know, it's a it, it's one of those things that's important to me. Sure. I kind of took a little different route. Uh, got lucky with some scholarships and went to school, but. Uh, 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 you know, your foundation is doing some great work, and I think that that people there aren't enough people that know about it. Yeah. Why don't you talk about what the MicroWorks does, just so that everybody knows, and then we can start start, start to throw jokes at each other for a while. <laughs> My job is I just tap the country on the shoulder every so often and say, Hey, what about what about him? What about her? Check it out. Whether that happens through the lens of a TV show or a foundation or even a commercial campaign. You know, everything I try and do comes down to meet this person and get a look at why they're doing what they're doing and learn why that matters. That's why I'm here at Con Expo. You know, Caterpillar's helped me for years in that endeavor. And uh, in a really general way, after 12 years of running the foundation, we've, we've come to the point now where we've assisted over a thousand people with our work ethic scholarship program and a lot of those people have gone on to prosper as a direct result of learning a skill that's in demand. Yeah. And that's that's the first half of our purpose to get individuals hooked up with opportunities that actually exist. The second part is to make sure the world knows about it. And so sharing examples of people, old and young, who maybe hit the reset button and started their career from all over, or maybe just finished high school with no clear sense of what they wanted to do with the rest of their life, but were hesitant to sign on the dotted line and go 80 grand in the hole to get a four-year degree that they didn't really feel passionate about in the first place. You know, to get somebody like that and say, look, don't rush don't jump in the hole. Learn a skill that's in demand first, let us help you, and get out into the world and see if it makes sense to your brain. Yeah. There are guys here right now operating some of this heavy equipment. They make six figures a year. Yeah. Those stories need to be told. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the scholarship program, what's the, what's the biggest challenge to uh, accomplishing what you want with that scholarship program? Well, look, it's not it's not for everybody. They're called work ethic scholarships, and I affirmatively want people who are willing to make a case for themselves. So, yeah, you got to write an essay, you got to make a video, you got to provide references, you have to sign the sweat pledge. You need to at least attempt to persuade me that you'll show up early and stay late and and spend the money I give you responsibly because I raise that money you know from people on my Facebook page and from other companies so I I don't just want to just don't want to hand it out to somebody because they because they need it because they want it I want to I want to understand what they're going to do with it yeah yeah how many scholarships are you giving away what's the we've given away a little over a thousand uh, a thousand scholarships and somewhere between five and six million dollars okay. uh, right now it's March in real time I got a million dollars I'm trying to give away by the end of the month, at least allocated toward applications. So if any of your folks are watching and you want to apply, microworks.org, fill out the application, we'll see what happens. So I mean, is it a, is it a million dollars a month that you're, I mean, no, is it busy I'm not there. March? No, no, it's, look, we do it once a year, and I, try, oh, I and so I set a million aside, I see. and then we just see how many apply, and of those applications, how many qualify. Mm -hmm. So last year, we probably got 3,000 applications, and 200 people wound up qualifying. Yeah. And it's not... 
it's not a it's, it's not a predictable thing. You know, it's relative. Every year the response is different. You know, last year I had half a million dollars. This year I got twice as much, so I need twice as many applicants, and hopefully twice as many qualified applicants. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. How, that, that must be a project going through the, all it the is. applications. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, you're not handling all of it. Not all of it, yeah. but I'm in it. Right. You know, yeah. I keep my hands on it. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I'll tell you what's weird. Hearing myself narrate a video in the background. Yeah. As uh, as I'm interviewed by you, I, I think you should answer the next question in that voice. All right, all right. I just have to come up with that que what that question is. Well, I got all the time I, in the world. Is, 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 really? <laughs> uh, you're gonna regret that. Right. that. Um, so uh, the other side of this is obviously raising the money. Um, what's the you know what what's your message to um, uh, companies that might want to get their name on helping you know move change the the move the needle yeah. on putting people into butts in the seats? Yeah, my message to them is give me your money. <laughs> I mean, I could... Come on, I, the voice. You gotta do it in the voice. Give me your money. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, it's a, it, it's an important question because I auction stuff out of my garage, like a telethon. I call them crap auctions, collectibles rare and precious. So, like, I autograph, like, these old, you know, mementos from Dirty Jobs, and people dramatically overpay for them, and I, and I, I keep that money. And those videos get around, and people learn about the foundation and send me checks. But uh, there are also big companies out there. Caterpillar's been a generous uh, supporter. Uh, the Charles Koch Foundation has been incredibly generous. So, you know, the money comes in from concerned citizens and weird fundraisers that I do myself and generous companies, and they they trust me to spend it efficaciously, yeah. and I do. There are, really, there are really two categories. The money's used for scholarships, very, very specifically for jobs that don't require four-year degrees, and we spend some of the money to make sure people see what happens to the recipients of the scholarships. So we, we, we have to get those success stories out there. But that's it. That's that's what I do with the money. All right. All right. Well, it's uh, like I say, uh, an admirable cause. I'm I'm, uh, I'm envious that. Uh, Got any money? Yeah, that sure, I'll come up. With you want to come up some money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll give get, it to me. We'll get together. We'll get together and say I'm a hot guy. It's not. Soon. I'm not an expert fundraiser, but but I've been doing it long enough now to know that people do care. You know, they they want to see their money used in the exact way. You know, it's promised. So my foundation is very lean. The money we take in goes specifically to our program needs. Uh, it's, it's important for me to say that because because uh, it's not the case everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm going to want to drag this out. You, you, you've done a great job and been working hard here this week, but I'm, I'm curious. You mentioned uh, your work on the San Francisco TV station as being kind of the genesis of Dirty Jobs. It was, yeah. Uh, can you talk about, uh, is there a story behind, you know, when well, you decided hey, this is actually an idea that I could, I could you know, sell to somebody? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the real story is a book called The Way I Heard It, which I finally finished and is now out there, where I, I kind of dig in and, and talk about it. But the short version is I was hosting a show called Evening Magazine, and one day uh, my mother called me. This is a terrible little show on after the local news, you know. And uh, I was sitting there. Dead in, space before Johnny Carson came on? No, it was worse than that. It was in the evening. So it came on like 7 o'clock, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was host of that show, and my mother called me one day and said, hey, your grandfather father's 90 years old, you know, he's a hero of mine. He built the house I grew up without a blueprint. Yeah. It was like, look, he's not going to live forever. Wouldn't it be great if he could turn on the TV before he dies and see you doing something that looked like work? <laughs> so I was like, oh! So that night, I took a cameraman into the sewers of San Francisco, and we profiled a sewer inspector All right. in San Francisco. And it was awful and funny and smart and strange and weird and inappropriate, but that was the moment I realized I was I was a better guest than I was a host, <laughs> and it changed the way I looked at television, and uh, that footage went viral before viral was a thing, and it led to dirty jobs in a very circuitous way, but ever since then, uh, I've been looking under the rock yeah. to see what's there. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Sure, that's great. That's, that's fantastic, Mike. So, so I really appreciate your time. Anytime. See if we can pass each other some viruses. I'm going to cough. Excuse All me. Right. <coughs>
<laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, You're welcome. We'll see you around. You build things. Things that last. That's why you surround yourself with people you can rely on. A cat dealer's name is a promise on everything we do. From helping you get into your cat, to protecting, updating, and servicing it. It's our way of saying we know there's so much more riding on it than just you. Let's do the work.